Okay, we saw how the callback functions work. Now, uh, let's try to do the uh, exact same thing using uh, promises now. So, I'm just going to create a uh, file called uh, hello sayer uh, promise.js. And inside this file, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll uh, just first of all copy the code from uh, the hello sayer part. Um, let's just need to remove this stuff. And uh, we, we remove this while true part, which was for blocking the thread. We don't want that. Um, what I'll do is I'll create uh, this function a little differently. I'll return a promise. Again, okay. now the promise uh, constructor takes a function which contains uh, two callbacks: a resolve callback and a reject callback. You use the resolve callback when everything is, uh, you know, has run perfectly, and you use the reject callback when um, there has been some error. So in our case, I think uh, it's a very simple thing. There's not going to be any error here, so I'm just uh, going to see the simple case with only using resolve. So what I'll do is uh, we will uh, create a function which has resolve and reject inside that, and um, again, you can create a function like this if you want to which is perfectly fine or you can use the arrow function here which is also perfectly fine both the uh, ways of creating a function are uh, perfectly okay for this use case um, what we will do here is uh, we will just move all this code into this indent all that stuff and when my uh, iterations have run uh, I will just call resolve to tell the promise that you know whatever I promised to I have done okay Reject, I'm not calling anywhere, but it's that why it will be there because there's a syntax that we use. Now, if I uh, just run something like hello sayer uh, with um, three arnav and uh, hello sayer two deep, right? Um, if I just run like this, um, what we get here is, uh, of course, uh, They are running concurrently like it happened in the first case. Um, so the promises they start, and uh, I have made no, uh, you know, mechanism to just run something after the promise. So they're just running parallelly with each other concurrently. Uh, they're running on the same thread, but they're running concurrently. So if I add the while true loop here, it will still stop uh, the execution. So promises are not giving you any new thread or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, making it. Uh, uh, well, uh, in a concurrent way, it appears to be parallel. Now, what I'm going to do is now change this invocation to something like this. Um, dot then. So, promises, uh, when I call hello sayer, what I get in return is, um, I mean, we can just check that out. Let's say, um, console.log. What do I get from hello sayer, right? If I call hello sayer, what's the thing that I get in return? And what I get is, is it's a promise. It's a promise object. Okay, it's a promise object that I get. Um, let's do this thing. Is that you know, promise object? What we can do is we can call this function called then. Okay, and it's a then uh, function. Let me just uh, create another function here. And uh, pass this hello sir Pratik into that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, now, if I run this code, you see that uh, Arnav gets printed first, and uh, Pratik gets printed after that. Now, if I want something to be printed after uh, Pratik uh, has been uh, printed, I can add a then here, right? And uh, I can add another function down here, and I can just do this hello say uh, then thing inside that, and uh, three. Very well, like that, right? And just run this thing, and we get things happening sequentially instead of parallel, which uh, we wanted to. But then this code is looking exactly like the callback code, which looks like this angle bracket kind of thing, which you know, not so good. Um, what if we uh, do something else? Um, we uh, change it a little bit. We convert this code into something like this. Um, let's remove this then function from here. I'm going to do then. And I'm going to call hello sayer with uh, uh, two and put the here. And I'm going to do then again here. 
and I'm gonna do close hit. Um, I don't know what. Um, let's say three. Bishop. Okay. So I'm actually putting this hello say thing into the then function directly. Okay. Um, and I'm piping the then calls one after the other instead of like I'm not doing this. Okay. So this is a little different from doing it here. So hello say like the code up to here from. I don't know if you can see the highlight part of the screen from uh, uh, this part of, uh, to here. This returns a promise itself as well. Hello, sir, Pratik, when I call it returns a promise. I can attach this then function directly to this promise or what I can do is uh, I can put the then function in the main promise chain, okay? And I can like try uh, just clear the output here, uh, just run this code and as you can see, right now, it brings us back to the same place which is it just starts things uh, in the parallel mode okay um, because uh, I did not wait for this promise to end now if I actually put this then call um, and like put it here right in that case if I run um, again okay um, so this thing does not work well. What I can do instead is, if I want that promise to end, I can make it a function that returns a promise. Okay, so I mean, to be write it in an expanded form, I'm basically writing, I'm creating a function that uh, returns uh, the inner promise. So I'm returning a promise from inside promise here. Okay, um, so I can just write it in a short form like this. I can write a function that returns hello say pretty. And I can do the same thing here. Okay. And now if I run this code, you'll see that uh, you know if I just clear the output and yeah, run this code. See, we got sequential execution here. Now, as you can see, we're using promises along with uh, these arrow functions. What you have is a very um, easy way to control whether it's going to happen concurrently or whether it will happen sequentially. Um, how do you change that? You just simply, you know, instead of uh, this, if you just remove this, just remove this part of the code, there you go, and we turn it into, you see, parallel execution, okay? Now, you return the promise from inside the promise, you nest the promises, okay? And you get sequential execution, right? You get sequential execution. Now, if I uh, like uh, put some more of these right out here, right? Okay. How about this? Um, and I run this. So again, sequential execution in a very easy way. Uh, no deep arrow kind of systems uh, coming out here. Uh, you know, it, it, it looks very you know one after the other. That's how it looks like. Okay. So that's how promises help us. Uh, then apart from promises, there is another way to make uh, you know uh, change between uh, sequential and parallel execution. Uh, we will see that uh, we're using the async and await keywords. So, uh, in this video here, that's what promises help us do. We'll check out async and await in the next video. So, I think it makes clear to you that you know what this and this does. I mean, uh, code which is written like this, and if I have a code which is uh, written like this, I mean, this does uh, concurrently and This does it uh, sequentially, okay? Just remember that, that uh, if you just simply call the promises, it's gonna happen concurrently, just simultaneously all together. But if you actually wait for the other promise, the, the inner promise to return uh, from like resolve and like you call it then after that. So in that case, uh, you're able to do it sequentially. So you have both the things available to you with a very little change in the syntax.